thing that we know about the freight tech industry is the problems that affect our supply chain aren't new problems. These mm -hmm. are problems that have been around for a long time. What's different, what's fascinating is the technology that can solve those problems has so rapidly increased. So I Welcome to Stream, a trucktractortrailer.com production. My name is Zach Miller. I'm your host, and I'm honored to be joined today by Matthew Leffler, who is the Vice President for Trailer Solutions at V-Hub, and probably somebody who you're familiar with if, you know, you watch trucking and freight-related podcasts. Matthew, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Zach, thank you so much for having me, man. I am so excited to be here. I know, I'm so excited to have you. I'm so glad we were finally able to do this. And the timing is perfect because the last couple of episodes here on stream, we've really hammered home this topic of freight tech, you know, this sort of emerging industry here in the freight and logistics sector. And, you know, V-Hub is right there. V-Hub is on the, the forefront of, of freight tech. Absolutely, man. The thing that we know about the freight tech industry is the problems that affect our supply chain aren't new problems. Mm -hmm. These are problems that have been around for a long time. What's different, what's fascinating is the technology that can solve those problems has so rapidly increased. So I love the conversation. I love the topic. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think that's that's one of the funny things about like how freight tech finally emerged, right? Because you're talking about trucking, one of the most um, analog, you know, old school type industries um, to get them evolved, for lack of a better word, into utilizing technology. I th it's been a pretty long haul, pun of course intended, on stream <laughs> always, but with, you know, with, with between the just boom in e-commerce combined with the pandemic, the industry didn't have a choice. You know, it, yes. it, it, it was freight tech or nothing really at this point. <laughs> the, 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 the fundamental thing I think about the pandemic is it has been the great accelerator of the trends and the forces that shape our supply chain. What you kind of outlined about the reluctance of the freight companies to adopt uh, innovation, it's not so much that uh, they didn't understand how to affect it. The challenge was this is a fragmented industry. Yes. It is incredibly fragmented and, and every single part of the supply chain is fragmented from maintenance to dedicated to less than truckload. And because there's that fragmentation, it means there's silos and mm -hmm. there's only one way to break silos down, technology. And when you have the right people, the right processes and the right technology, then you can compete in a way that's very effective. And I think companies now realize that if you haven't been paying attention to technology, uh, you better start because you don't have an option anymore. You're exactly right. I, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. Is, and is that, uh, you know, with V-Hub? Uh, when you're we're trying to build partners with VHub, is is that what you've been seeing? Uh, the conversations you're having with partners and potential partners is they're finally starting to to come around, so to speak, see the light, if you will. I love talking about what VHub does because we start off by saying we're a trailer sharing platform, and people think that sounds interesting, but I have no idea what that. Means. <laughs> The reality is we've already been sharing trailers for decades. So an example of sharing a trailer is a simple thing like repositioning an asset. So you mm -hmm. say to somebody, this trailer is in a location that I don't want it to be. I'd like it to be over there. Well, this is a version of sharing where you take one trailer that you own and give custody and control to a third party. The same thing is with things like trailer interchanges or trailer pools when different people, different stakeholders want to have access to a piece of equipment. What VHub does is take the process that many companies have already utilized in, a, in an analog or mechanical kind of fashion and say, let's digitize it. Let's use the fact that every single person who's listening to this and everyone across the streets and all the roads all across the highways has a supercomputer in their pocket. <laughs> like That wasn't a thing 15 years ago, but now it's ubiquitous. So how can you take that technology and make it useful for the things that you know you have to do? So trailer sharing is really just about, hey, we all need to have information about this asset and what's inside that box keeps the world moving. And so trailers are getting smarter and we are capitalizing on the trend of smarter devices, smarter trailers 
to drive a better value proposition for people that use our product. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 then you you start to see, you know, as, as that gets utilized more and more and more, you start to see, well, okay, there's going to be less theft. Uh, companies are able to utilize their assets. Freight is able to move a little bit more efficiently. And and my gosh, do we need freight to move more efficiently right now in this market? Good lord! I mean, the you've the, seen this firsthand with yeah. trucks and trailer. Is it you guys have looking for used equipment and new equipment? That's hard to do. It is hard to find assets. Just looking at trailers specifically, between 2019 and 2020, we as an industry, all the manufacturers together, made 111,000 fewer trailers in 2020. Coming into 2021, um, we're still facing massive supply chain crunches, not just with component suppliers, but with labor. So yeah. we know that it's going to be a long haul to get new equipment. So if you can't get new now, use what you have better. And that means using the digital tools to drive the value of the products you guys have. This is the trend that you don't get to opt out of. That's what makes it so fascinating. No, I, I really 100%. And it's just, it, it, it's, it's mind boggling to, to have these conversations with, uh, with dealers and with fleets, especially some of these leasing companies who, you know, I'll call, I'm really good friends of mine. I'll shoot him a call. Hey, do you, you know, I'm looking for this. Do you have it? He's like, I wish I, you'd be my first call. We don't have it. I get, I get, I'm getting pestered every single day. The OEM has no idea when they're going to give us our back ordered, um, you know, assets. It's just like, to, you know, what, what's the quickest way to, to stress someone out in fleet management right now is ask them what assets they have. <laughs> This is the real challenge when you have an efficient supply chain versus a resilient supply chain. Mm. Our supply chain for the past, let's say, several decades have been moving to just in time. And just in time means we're not going to stock anything that we're not going to sell in a week or two. And what that means is it's great for shareholders when everything is working really, really well. The minute you get that gut punch that says, ah, the supply chain's not going to work that way anymore, everything starts binding up. And what I hope we take away from the whole pandemic and the whole supply chain crisis, whether it's the Port of Long Beach or making trailers in different places across the country, make a more resilient supply chain. You have to control your supply chain. That is the value that you bring to your customers is being able to bring the things that you need on time, undamaged. And I hope that that trend will go that way. But, you know, just in time is pretty efficient. So it's hard to say. It's also one of those things where it's like how much how much faith should we put in the consumer? Because on the one hand, you have the consumer who finally understands the importance of supply chain and how more or less how it works and, and all that. But at the same time, you know, these problems are going to get resolved eventually. Will they have short memories and, and, you know, quickly, quickly slide back into forgetting? That's where things get a little dicey. I think when you're trying to, to sort of predict some of these changes that we'd like to see, headed into 2022. Yeah, and the thing that you, you touched on really well is the way people buy things is mm -hmm. changing. Like the idea that you would have to go touch a truck or touch a trailer before you rent it or buy it, it's absurd. Like no one does that anymore. No one will do that. Exactly, exactly. But that goes back to what you were saying before. You know, you have the supercomputer in your pocket. You can get Anything you'd want, the, 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 the views, the specs, you, me, you get anything you want from it. You don't have to take time out of your day to go travel to, to sit in a vehicle that you pretty much understand what it's going to feel like. It, 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 it's fascinating. Oh, I love the, the idea of like when I had mechanics and shops, the mechanics would have their cell phones with them. And I would always like, why do you have that? Is that helping the customer? And what I learned was that you have companies that are innovating to make these applications on cell phones that help people do their jobs. Oh, I'm looking at a wiring diagram. Holy cow, yes, okay, get your work done, that's awesome. The ubiquity of these devices mean the types of work you can do are just manifestly better and more interesting. So I, I love that the technology is catching up with the problems that we have. Oh, absolutely, and that's where, that example right there is where you take the software as a service and bring it out of the digital into, into the real. Um, that's what we're talking about with the, with the EV, EV um, maintenance. It's basically a customer service thing where the mechanic is going to have an app from the OEM to say, 
you know, here's here's how you run the diagnostic and, and here's how you replace the component. Um, it'll be it'll be pretty quick and pretty seamless all because of software. Yeah, the, the understanding that I've heard, and again, it goes based on different manufacturers, but as much as 70 percent less maintenance on an electric motor. This is less moving parts. It is less combustion. I mean, the idea of just combustion motors, there's an explosion happening in your truck <laughs> right now. And that's the safe explosion. We understand what it's supposed to do. We recirculate the exhaust gas back into the system. We cool it down. We have chemicals we treat it with to make the air a little bit cleaner. You just start talking about the emissions maintenance and you say, if we can get away from that, how much time and money will we save? We have a mechanic shortage. We always talk about this. We have a truck driver shortage. So how do you solve those problems? Well, you make a machine that, does, that requires less preventative maintenance. That's fascinating. And that change is just going to exacerbate the movement of these, these trends that we see in the industry, these autonomous vehicles, these connected systems, electric powertrains, shared assets. This is the future of transportation. Whether we like it or not, we don't get to opt out of it. No, 100%, 100%. So what you need to do is brace for it, find partners that make sense for you, and find technology platforms that make sense for you. It, it's, it, it, it's a basic adapt or die. Really, it really is. You don't get to, that's exactly right. The trucking companies, the margins they operate with is, is challenging. It is not a business mm -hmm. you make tons and tons and tons of margin. And because the operating ratios are so slim for so many, the ability to innovate and experiment isn't quite there. But that's what makes these startups that are trying to disrupt the way that they do business. For some companies, yeah, sending a trailer to auction might be the best option to how to sell that. But maybe a better version is an online platform that says, here's all the different ways you can buy, finance, insure, and maintain these assets. Offering the customer the types of things they want to buy is the goal of every one of these startups. So what I love about, yeah, what I love about you guys are doing is we understood the problem. We made the software to make the problem solved. And then we scale it. And it's fascinating because this is what makes innovation fun. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but that's the transportation game. It's a it's a hit or miss thing sometimes. Oh, it absolutely is. And and I'm sure anybody who, who just finished watching this can tell you and I are having a lot of fun. We're really enjoying it. <laughs> I love this industry. I mean, I'm a second generation guy. So my father Same. got in the industry in the 70s. He was, yeah, old roadway. He worked nights. And you look at the way that you had to manage a fleet in the 70s, manually counting trailers every year to make sure that you haven't lost any. Mm -hmm. uh, losing trailers doesn't really happen as much anymore. You might lose control of it for a little bit, but you generally know hey, it's around this area. So these problems that our fathers had to deal with, they're kind of starting to go away and the newer problems are showing up. It's, it's, it's a fascinating business. It absolutely is. Matthew, someone wants to get in touch with you. Someone wants a V-Hub demo. How would they go about doing that? Best way to go is to go to our website, vhubapp.com, email us at hello at vhubapp.com, or for me, find me on LinkedIn. I have made the conscious decision following many of the people that I admire. That's the only one that I do. I don't understand the other ones. And it's just Matthew Leffler. Uh, you can look me up in LinkedIn and you'll find me. Outstanding. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate the conversation. Uh, if you guys are interested in more of these conversations related to freight tech, supply chain, e-commerce, the works, go ahead and subscribe to Stream, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.